Hello everyone, welcome back. In part 3 of my Jessica Lens videos, I showed Jessica morphing into different monsters, but I've not done a video explaining how you can do it. So today, let me show you how. If you head over to the URL I'll provide in the link in the description, there is a loopback wave script. And you will need to download the script and put it into your scripts folder. So if you right click here and say save link as, you need to put it into web UI scripts folder. Now you can name it a different name if, if that's your preference, or you can keep the name of the file that you download. I chose to call it loopback dash and then the original name. Once you have that, you will need to restart your stable diffusion UI and confirm that the script is there. So if you go to image to image and you go to the scripts down here, you should see loopback wave v1.4.1. Um, that'll make sure that you have it installed correctly. Then the next thing you'll need is a requirement for FFmpeg and make sure that it's on your path. The link to FFmpeg will be in the description. And I have an installation video to show you how to get that onto your path. The other thing it mentions here is make sure that FFmpeg is compiled with these options. So how do you know if you have these options for FFmpeg? Well, if you type in your terminal, ffmpeg-version it provides all this information to you so what we're looking for is this vp9 or this vpx and as you can see i have it in the enable lib vpx or enable lib web p that confirms i have these two and then the other one is the H265 or H264 and over here there is the enable libx264 enable libx265 so my ffmpeg installation has those uh, options compiled into ffmpeg so now that we have the requirements we have the script we want to go ahead and create five images that we want to morph between each of the five images. Um, but before we start getting those five images, let's actually create a, a reference image that we can use in ControlNet. Uh, so what I have here in the text to image is I have a prompt for Emma Watson wearing a red jacket, a black top, smiling, and looking at the camera. Because I want to get an image from shoulder to head and I've used two LoRa's here, um, More Details LoRa and an Age Slider LoRa. And I'll provide links to those in the description. I'm using the Deliberate V3 checkpoint. I'm using the sampler DPM++ 2M Keras, sampling steps 20, width and height uh, 512 by 512. This just helps me frame the picture consistently for a headshot. And then I have CFG scale at 7 and leave everything the same. So let's go ahead, generate that. All right, it's nice. I, I want perhaps to go through a few more, see what else we can get. Okay, this one's quite nice. So let's start with uh, this one. What you want to do now is put this in control net. So we, we generate all five images. They in this uh, shape for the reference. So we put this here in control net. We enable it. We set pixel perfect because we want to use the same width and height. Uh, we can choose line art. Uh, let's see what the preprocessor is for standard. That's not bad. We try realistic. And realistic is not bad. Let, let's leave it as standard and see how it works out. All right, leave the control rate to one. Step zero for start and one for the end step. Uh, put control net is more important. 
And now we have control net enabled, we have our settings dialed in, and we're going to start off with an older Emma Watson. Okay, so there we have our first image out of the five that we're going to be generating. So we can look at generating a few more. Keep the prompt the same, I'm just changing the slider each time. So we're making her younger and younger. Okay, so we'll, that's our second. Then we can go to two. Okay, now I don't have to get age sliding one because I already have that in the reference image, so I can skip that one and go off to maybe minus two here. And make her look much, much younger. All right. Now we have each of our five images. What we want to do is head over to image to image with the first image, depending on which, which order you want to go. You want to go from young to old, or old to young. Let's say we want to go from this younger to an older version of Emma Watson. We can just push this here to image to image. Okay. Um, we have it in image to image. We want to take the script and choose loopback wave. And then for this one, we want to set the frames to 100 is fine. Frames per wave, 20 is fine. Additional noise. Uh, let's set this a little bit lower so it doesn't alter our image too much. Um, we're going to need some prompts. Give your video a name. Okay, frames per second we'll leave at 10. And we'll, we'll set the video quality to 40, that's fine. Here in the coding, you've got different encoding options. That's where FFmpeg comes in, but let's see if it is at BP9, that's what's recommended. Um, leave all the other settings the same. What you want to do here on your denoising is also set this to 0 0.4. Okay, so that these two are the same. You can set your CFG to 7, that's fine. Okay, if you want, you can now bump up your sampling uh, steps if, if you want to 30 we can leave them at 20 all right but we what we need now is all all five images we need the prompts and we haven't kept any details about those prompts so what we can do is if this is from if this is zero in the sequence we have we have a hundred frames what we want to do is something like this. We want to go at 20, start at 20, then we want to go to 40, and then we want to go to 60, and then we want to go to 80. Okay, and then over here we, we're going to put in the seed. And then after the seed we are going to put in what prompt we had. For each one of the various ages that we that we went through. So since we're starting at this prompt, now we we didn't change the prompt that much. We went from two to one to positive two to four to five. Okay. Uh, so we'll start off with a young Emma Watson and then progress through each one of the frames to an older Emma Watson. What we don't have is the seeds. So let's look at bringing in the seed for 
the, the first reference image we had. So if you go to PNG info and you drag in the reference image, over here we can grab the seed from here as well as if you wanted if you wanted to grab the prompt you could. So put the seed over here. And then we need the second image. So again, back here, we want this one. This is when this was at point two. So we take the seed. And we put that over here. And you just continue through that. So we take the next one. Whenever this was at four, we take the seed. that over here and then we need the last one and this was at five okay so that was at five so this is the seed head over to image to image and put the last seed in all right so we have the script set all the parameters set we have the prompt changing the video name and everything else. Now what you can do is click generate. Alright, I'll pause the video until we get back to this. Okay, it is done but it has given an error and I'll show you how to fix this error in a moment. But there's one additional thing I want to show you before we actually uh, deal with this error. Uh, if I show you what the resulting images look like, you can see that they start to get a little bit be colored And that's because there's not enough color from the denoise in order to continue through each one of the generations. So what you have to do is fix the denoise strength here. Uh, all right, so what we will do again, just go here and let's put this to 0 0.6. And then over here, let's also do that as 0 0.6 and then generate again. And we'll come back when that's done. Okay, uh, it is done, and of course we got the same error, but I realized that we made a mistake, so I had to do this a third time. Uh, what happened is, when you're in the text to image, and you say send this picture to image to image, it brought over the control net, but not our reference image. So what happened is, over here, in control net, this was enabled, but there was no independent image. So just quickly on my third run, I uploaded the reference image we had before and kept all the details the same and ran again. So this is what the, the results look like. So the images are much, much better than they were before. Oh, um, there is one other thing I did change on this particular third run uh, is I noticed again we were losing losing noise so the pictures were were starting to degrade so I did go and increase this to 7.5 and 7.5 here for the additional noise so the, these are settings you got to play with uh, to get the best um, setup for, for what you're looking for all right, let's go look at what's going on with this error. If we head over to our terminal, we'll see that I try to run this command ffmpeg and I'm just going to copy that for a second. And it's providing in some details like the frame rate, starting number. This was the place where it outputs uh, where it expects the the output we gave the name Emma. So 
So let's go look for this output, image to image, loopback wave, emma. We go here to output, image to image, loopback wave, emma. What it's looking for is all the files here. But as you can see, it starts without the date. It starts to look for PNG files. So it's missing date in the path and that's why it fails. So if you want, you can just go ahead and run this command line directly. Uh, so what we could do is something like this. So we can just put in ffmpeg, the same same values we had up here. All right, so this is the path. The V was VP9. So we can say this is VP9. And BV was 0, CRF was 40. Uh, it's the 420p. Uh, I left some of the rest of this details off. But I went up to here, and this was 40, okay, you can make more quality by setting it to 60, that's up to you. And then we set the output here. So all I've really changed in there, script is I've added today's date. So if you run that, you'll see that it starts to generate your video file. And if we open up that video file, over here, you'll see that it's playing through. Very nice. Okay, so question is, that's potentially actually a good thing, right? So now you've got the command here of what to run. You could upscale the images before running this command. It'll give you better quality that way. Uh, the I learned later though how to fix this error. If you go to stable diffusion and you go to uh, let's see, I think I remember if I remember correctly. You go to settings and then in your save to directory the directory name pattern, see it has a date here that fills in today's date. So you need to remove this and then also uncheck save images to a subdirectory. So uncheck that and then say apply settings and reload UI. And that should fix that problem. But a lot of the other extensions that I use and other workflows that I have, I, I like to keep this on. So I won't do that for the purposes now, but that's how you would fix the loopback wave script. Alright, so that's it. So that's all for today and I hope you enjoyed it. If you want to learn more about Stable Diffusion and Automatic 1111, check out the links below in the description. As always, please support this channel by subscribing and clicking on the like button below.